Hello everyone, welcome back. So today I'm going to tell you how I got a part-time job in tech while studying uh, as a graduate student at the University of Toronto. So currently I'm working at an AI healthcare startup as a DevOps engineer, of course part-time. So I'm kind of responsible for streamlining their uh, deployment process and also integrating their product with uh, other major uh, healthcare platforms. At this position, I've been blessed with online work, so I don't have to commute to work and also the work hours are flexible. So I don't have to work uh, for a fixed uh, time of let's say 4 hours every single day. Uh, instead, I could work for let's say 8 hours on weekends and 1 or 2 hours on weekdays depending upon my class schedules and assignments. International students often take up part-time jobs to cover some expense. So if you're living in an expensive city like Toronto, then you know that sometimes GIC is not sufficient to cover your living expenses. So you need an additional source of income. Also, having a part-time job gives you some uh, additional room to spare. So let's say you, 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 you find a jacket uh, in a store and you really like it, but you don't have the money to buy it. So having a part-time job gives you a bit of extra room so that uh, you can you know, spend more, you, you can eat better. So currently, uh, because I have a part-time job, I'm able to not just eat, uh, cook and eat inside my house. I'm also able to go outside and eat sometimes just to, you know, uh, maintain the sanity. Most often, international students go for cashier jobs at Walmart or a barista job at Tim Hortons or Starbucks. Now, there's nothing wrong with such jobs, but if you take up part-time work in a field or area, which is directly related to your career, that will go a long way. So for me, it's tech and cloud engineering because that's what I'm interested in right now. So I've taken a part-time job in such a field. But if you're into a research program, let's say in chemical engineering, then you could apply for positions like lab assistants or research assistants. So these are the fields that will directly help you in your career. So you'll, get, so you'll gain like real experience while you're actually studying. At the same time, these jobs could pay you anywhere between 20 to 25 dollars an hour compared to uh, the usual cashier or barista job which usually pays around 15 dollars an hour. Now I'll tell you how I did my hunting for tech jobs but before that remember to update your LinkedIn, uh, your resume and if you have a portfolio website then remember to update that as well. By the way, if you're finding value out of this video, kindly press the like button and subscribe to the channel. It helps my videos reach more people and motivates me to keep making videos like this. Now, I'll share my hunting strategy for part-time jobs in tech here in Canada. So the first thing to know about part-time jobs is that companies don't usually list them on their hiring page because they don't see that as necessary. So what you have to do is go out there and inquire. So you have to email a bunch of companies and ask them if they have open part-time positions based on your profile. And the ideal type of companies for this is the, are the ones that have less than 50 employees. So I'm talking about small scale startups. So I was really clear about whom to email. So the first thing I did was I went to AngelList, which is a website where you could find uh, jobs at startups. So I filtered uh, my search down to uh, small scale companies that have uh, those that have less than 50 employees. And then I searched for some tech keywords. So for example, Node.js or Python or uh, Django or Flask, Express. So these are some of the tech that I'm familiar with. These are some of the frameworks or languages that I'm familiar with. So I had, uh, so I searched for these and I found a bunch of companies. So I got an entire list of companies that had posted uh, jobs in these areas, but none of them had posted anything related to part-time positions. So the only thing I did from there was I got the emails of these companies uh, through their contact us page and then I got a list of all the emails whom I had to send a generic cover letter and resume. So I emailed all of these companies with my cover letter and resume. And do keep in mind that I didn't tailor my resume or cover letter for any of them. These were all generic resumes for me. And I just emailed them inquiring about uh, if they have any open position for me based on my profile. So this way I emailed about 150 companies. Keep in mind that quantity is the key here you cannot get away with quality because oftentimes if you're just you know focused too much on uh, tailoring your resume or your cover letter uh, you'll basically run out of time before you could even reach you know hardly 20 to 30 companies so 
use the same uh, cover letter use the same resume make sure it's generic and just keep inquiring so i emailed as i said i emailed about 150 companies and out of that i think i got around 10 replies and through that i just signed up with the one i got uh, the first so i did all of this process before even coming to canada while i was still in india i think it was uh, when i had about 15 or 20 days remaining before i was going to fly so all of this took me hardly a week or two and uh, before i could even land in canada i already had a job offer in hand another thing to keep in mind is that if these companies don't reply to you then don't just leave them with that uh, do write a reminder every week so if you're sending your email every monday then make sure that after a week if they have not replied they, you should write a reminder asking them to just consider your uh, request and if they don't have anything it's totally fine they can just tell you and if, it, if they don't reply even after two or three reminders then you can easily drop them off also the reason i'm telling you to target small scale startups is because they don't actually have a proper hiring process so they're not going to grind you through uh, interviews after interviews so usually it, it just revolves around you know having a conversational interview with you getting to know you and then if required maybe just another technical round if you instead apply at a tech giant then you have very little chance of securing a part-time role because they don't usually have uh, such roles and they have a very rigid uh, hiring structure so they can't just you know uh, produce a position out of nowhere and just take you in so that is the reason why you should go for uh, small scale startups as opposed to um, big established companies the hiring process usually involves a technical interview after a conversational interview i was lucky in the case that i did not have to give a technical interview i was just hired based on my previous uh, skill set and my previous experiences sometimes companies or startups like to give takeaway projects as well so you basically uh, get sort of like an assignment and you complete it at home uh, in about two or three days and you submit uh, it back to them so that is another way uh, these companies sometimes assess your technical skills now let's talk about legal requirements because if you end up doing something illegal then your study permit might be revoked and you might be deported back to your home country so listen to these points really carefully so as an international student if you want to work part time and your and, and your job is on campus then there is no time limit so you can work for as many hours as you want and earn accordingly but if your work is off campus, if you're not working for anything on campus, if you're working off campus, you can work for a maximum of 20 hours per week. If you work more than that, then you're working illegally. And as I said, you might be deported back if you're caught. Since I am working at a startup, this 20 hours per week rule applies to me as well. Also, you can only start working after your courses begin and that should be clearly reflected on your job contract. So that was all about finding relevant part-time jobs as an international student in Canada. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you later.